Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to do a quick breakdown here of what I saw at SHOT and anybody who's been to SHOT would know that there's simply too much to do. I could be out here for two hours trying to go over all the different things so I pared it down to sort of a top three and the way I did that was to think what would my audience care about, right? So obviously there's tons of stuff out there for, for hunting and like 22 precision work and and everything else, but you guys, my audience isn't generally speaking uh, devoted to that. So I just kind of wanted to focus on the things that you guys care about. And uh, then at the end, we'll give you my impression of shot overall, because this was my first shot show. So uh, number one on the list, and this is not in order, of things that I thought were super cool there was of course the new SLR 107 fixed stock version. So what we have here is a normal SLR 107 FR uh, as we've known it before this past week. So uh, it has the side folding stock, you push the button, fold it in and break it down. Of course you could fire from that position, but more advantageously you'd have it open. This one also has a 24 millimeter break on there. So the new ones that are coming in look exactly like what most of you guys know as the uh, SLR 108. So if you're familiar with that from overseas designation, that's pretty much what's coming in now. And that one there has a uh, has a 14 millimeter break, and it actually has a muzzle nut on there. We have a guest. You guys can't see. This is Miss Ruby. She's coming over to try to be on camera and hog it up. So uh, the one that's coming in is going to have a muzzle nut, but it's going to have 14 millimeter threads, and of course it's going to have a fixed stock, fixed Warsaw length stock, just like this one, except not folding, but same length. So. That is cool. And the big thing that's cool about it is the price point. So that one is coming in at uh, MSRP of $849 with black furniture and $869, I believe, with plum. So that's huge. It's huge for the market as a whole. Um, there's a lot of AKs that are not, aren't going to have a Comblock heat treated receiver, Comblock cold hammer forged uh, barrel and all that stuff that are going in the $850 price range currently. Um, so I think that's going to shake the industry up a little bit in many different ways. So really a lot to uh, a lot to take in for the AK industry and it'll impact all the rifles that you guys are offered. So more competition is generally a good thing. So we'll see where that goes. So moving on, uh, number two on the list is going to be the FLIR Q14. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but there is a duck mocking me off camera. Uh, but the FLIR, uh, a FLIR Q14B, our Bravo, is a micro thermal optic. So it can do a ton of different things. Number one, it takes PBS mounts, which is huge, PBS 14. So if you have any mounts for PBS 14s, they will work with this. So you can rifle mount it or weapon mount it either in front or behind of your optic. I would recommend in front uh, in most cases. Uh, you can also mount it on your uh, helmet so you can use it uh, as a monocular with one eye and then have the other eye seeing daylight and the other one seeing IR light. So that's certainly huge, or heat signature light rather. And then um, you can also use it as just a handheld monocular. So it does all three. It has a 12 micron sensor, which is huge. Uh, very good processing, very good clarity. Um, I was up on top of the Venetian Hotel looking down onto the street, which is about four to 500 meters, depending on where I was looking. And the clarity was fantastic. You could see people's uh, footmarks afterwards, after they stepped. So you could see the difference in the heat signature. So it was just, it was huge. Again, the kicker, just like the rifle that we talked about, is gonna be the price point. This thing is coming in at $1,899, I believe, MSRP. And uh, I mean, for that kind of quality, coming from a brand like FLIR with that kind of clarity and weight, uh, it's, it's, it's the proverbial game changer for the thermal optics industry. It really is. There's, there's going to have to be a lot of other companies that are competing. They're going to have to step up big time if they want to compete with that because it does pretty much everything well, at least from what I saw. And if FLIR can get them out in numbers, I think they're going to sell a ton of them. So the last thing and number three on the list, my dog just slobbered on me, but uh, the number three on my list is going to be the Streamlight Rail Mount. So they have a new one out. I did the Rail Mount 1, the Rail Mount 2. This one has... A, a little bit of a different body and the reason it has a different body is it takes either a um, 18, 18 500, I can't think of the designation I'll write it on the bottom of the screen, but they're rechargeable batteries and it also takes two CR123 batteries. With the two CR123 batteries you're going to get the output of 1000 lumens. So the previous one I think was like 630 lumens or something like that and uh, this one cranks it up even more so it's brighter and it also takes 18650 that's what i couldn't think of it takes 18650 batteries for those of you guys that want to use rechargeables to train with um, i don't recommend using those in life or death situations but if you want to train with them that's fine and uh, this one gives you the 
a capability to do so and still works on all the scout mounts and everything like that. Um, so I think they're going to have a lot of sales with that, just like they have had with the rail mount one and two. Overall, I thought SHOT Show, first and foremost, is gigantic. If you've never been out to SHOT Show, it's really a lot to take in. Uh, I read on their little app that there's 14 miles of booths. So if you just think how long it takes to walk 14 miles, that's a pretty decent chunk of time and to actually stop at each booth and see what they have going on, there's just no way you can really take it all in. So um, I saw a lot of cool and interesting stuff for sure. We talked about three of the items earlier, but there's just so much that I just can't talk about here in one video, like I mentioned earlier, but the enormity of it is really the first thing you notice. It's on multiple levels. Um, there's media room, there's uh, all types of training going on, like classroom work. It's all going on simultaneously as well as range days are going on really every day. The one that you guys probably see the most is gonna be media range day. I think that's on Monday, but there's other days that have ranges actually every day that I know of had a range but that was going on. I got invited to a range every day. So you could really go to SHOT Show and never actually go into SHOT Show and still have all your time taken up. So the amount of stuff going on really is crazy. And then every evening there's, there's product demos and meetings and all kinds of stuff going on. So it's just huge. Um, of course, one thing that really is going to be historically remembered about this shot show for sure is the U.S. Army selecting the XM-17 uh, project winner, which was going to be the Sig Sauer P320 variant uh, with the safety and flat dark earth. I think it has the optics cut as well. Um, so that's going to be what folks remember here for sure, and that's going to impact all the different companies involved in that. So I think FN, Smith & Wesson, um, Sig Sauer, Beretta, and Glock all submitted entries to that. And every one of them um, certainly had had a good bit of money invested and SIG wanted out. So congratulations to SIG. It's good to have obviously another American made gun serving our military. We'll see how it works long term. Um, but SIG 320 is a good gun overall. So uh, that's pretty much what I think of SHOT. Uh, number one, uh, huge. Number two, good to see everyone. I didn't mention that. Uh, seeing all the different folks um, that you guys watch and that I watch. Because I'm just like you guys, like I watch gun channels. You know, so I know other people on YouTube who do this say they don't watch other gun channels. I do. I watch all of them and I watch pretty much every video that all the different gun channels put up because I'm always uh, looking for different people's opinions and trying to learn and, and see what's going on out there in the industry. So it's good to see all those folks concentrated in one area and uh, just talk shop too. That's also interesting to do. So that's pretty much it guys. Uh, those are the cool things we found at SHOT. That was my impression of SHOT and that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, thanks for watching as always. I really appreciate it and uh, we're going to cut it off right there. We'll see you in the next video.